This is the Swish Guitar Nerd, and today I'm reviewing a uh, Epiphone Les Paul 100 or the LP 100. Uh, yeah, to make it real quick, this is very similar to the Les Paul, Les Paul Special 2 that I've review reviewed. Hmm, I can't talk today, that I've reviewed before. Um, yeah, I'll go through all the features, of course. If you've seen my videos, you know I talk a lot. And yeah, well, let's start then. At the top, we have proper tuners. Good uh, unbranded tuners, but they are really solid. They work really well, and I like them. Uh, yeah. And as I said, it's basically the same neck as you find on the Les Paul Special 2, or for that instance, on the uh, Epiphone G310. Same neck profile. It's like uh, close to a 60s Gibson style neck, I think. Uh, mahogany and the Rosswood fingerboard. Uh, and yeah. Same frets as on the Special 2, and uh, these are medium jumbo, but yeah, I'll talk more about them then later. And it's a bolt-on. <laughs> I like bolt-on guitars, so that is a good thing, if you ask me. It has a very uh, slim body. It's not the, you know, the Les Paul thing which makes it rather light. What makes this different from uh, the uh, Special 2 is that this has a maple top, actually. And it's basically the same thickness, so... One wonders how thick the maple is, but it's actually arched. And the Les Paul Special 2 is not arched, so yeah, something is added to this guitar. And uh, yeah, we have two volumes, two tones your regular three-way switch, the Epiphone uh, tape piece, uh, the lock tone, tunematic bridge, and two humbuckers. That's it. Uh, the neck profile, as I said, is like the 60s one, and that's uh, slimmer than the 50s one, but yeah, guys like Slash prefer the 60s neck profile so it should be good for anyone else um yeah materials and hardware it gets an eight and the body is mahogany underneath the maple of course i didn't say that okay build quality and durability well you have proper tuners and that was basically one of my only complaints about the special too so here we are, good to go. Uh, the fret ends on this one has been taken care of with much more detail and it's, it feels finished and ready to play. The neck fits very tight into the neck pocket and uh, yeah, the finished job is really nice on this one. And well, the lock tone bridge, uh, yeah. I've tried a lot of guitars with it and it works really well and uh, yeah, it works. So um, I really don't have that much bad things to say. Uh, the fret job is better, but it's if you look close, it doesn't look very good, but it feels much better. So yeah, but it's a mahogany neck and they don't have a volute. Gibson, come on, add extra wood here. So you only get an 8 for that one. Uh, durability wise, because you will probably break the head off sometime. Playability. Uh, since it has this uh, thinner uh, Gibson style neck and uh, it has 12 inch radius and the medium jumbo frets and the really nice fret ends. Yeah, it's really easy to play and nice it feels very solid uh, it's a very resonating guitar you can actually 
feel the vibrations uh, all through the body. And uh, yeah, that's very inspiring. I like that. So playability gets an eight. Electronics. Well, as usual on the cheap Epiphones, you get a 650R pickup and a 700T pickup, ceramic pickups. And um, well, to be honest, I actually like these ones more than the Alnico Classic because these have a little bit, little bit more high end. Not as much as I want though, but I get to sounds later. Uh, yeah, three-way switch, two tones, two tones, two volumes. And on this one, to my big surprise, the tone knobs actually work. I mean, they didn't work on the Epiphone Dot, for instance. Um, so here you got a range of tones based on where you put it. Good thing. So for that you get a nine Epiphone. Make the other guitars this way. Uh, yeah, let's play it. I'll start with a clean sound. And since I can, I have backed off the tone knob just a bit. Uh, it's like on, yeah, maybe six out of 10 on the neck pickup. And it's full on on the other one. So as usual, I go from bridge pickup both together to the neck pickup. Okay, here's the clean sound. The action is really low and that makes it more playable as well so I should mention that. Here's uh, some overdrive.
and finally some high gain sound with a little bit of delay <laughs> Gets a seven for the sounds. Um, as usual, I don't like the Epiphone pickups because, uh, yeah, they don't have as much brightness as I, as, as I want. And um, they are very high gain, very high output, and that suits some styles. Rock, not the least. And... Uh, But yeah, as usual, I don't like them uh, because they don't have, uh, I don't know, a very good character. Uh, I'd like more high mids and more treble uh, to really you know, push the sound of the guitar. and Because uh, that's where the frequencies of a guitar is. You want to enhance those. But th there's nothing wrong with them. They might s suit your style and preference in sound, so... This is just my opinion. And you shouldn't stop this, make this stop you from buying the guitar. So all in all, it gets an 8.0. Uh, yeah, I like this guitar. It's a really good guitar. And uh, I think it's reliable and uh, dependable and uh, durable. So if I would get it, uh, I'd change the pickups and then and of course, remove the scratch plate because uh, it's really ugly. But uh, other than that, I wouldn't change anything. It's yeah, it's a workhorse of a guitar, I think. So yeah, that's my opinion. Um, yeah, this has been the Swedish Guitar Nerd uh, reviewing the Epiphone Les Paul 100 LP 100. I hope you found this useful, useful and uh, yeah, request more guitars for me to review. This has been a request as well on Facebook this time. So yeah, that's a place where you can interact with me. Well, see you soon. This has been the Swedish Guitar Nerd. Bye.